Uh, so uh, this is uh, episode six of uh, It's a Big, Big, Big Books World. And uh, I'm continuing with uh, my discussion of uh, The Glass Night uh, by David Helwig. Um, and uh, before I continue, um, I'd like to uh, mention a couple of, a uh, few other books uh, on, uh, uh, on the October crisis, Le Crise Octobre. Uh, the, the first is uh, this one by uh, uh, Louis Hamelin, uh, La Constellation de Lynx. It goes into some detail about the, uh, about the, um, about the crisis and what happened. Uh, another uh, that came out uh, uh, quite quickly after, after the crisis was uh, The Revolution Script by, uh, by Brian Moore. It was published by... Uh, by Pocket Books, a division of Simon and Schuster, uh, in 1972. So Moore was very interested in getting uh, a fictionalization, uh, a, a sort of this is sort of a, a bit of a an in cold blood esque uh, treatment of uh, of what happened. It's it's uh, it's it's part journalism and it's part fiction, uh, and it it basically. Uh, describes in a sort of literary slash cinematic style uh, w what happened during the crisis. Uh, the third is uh, this book by uh, John McFetridge, uh, a murder mystery entitled Black Rock. It's set in Montreal as the crisis is happening, but it's not about the crisis. It's, the, it's explicitly about a series of murders that are happening as the crisis is unfolding, and the whole point of the novel is that uh, the police resources are being pulled away because of the crisis from this murder investigation and, a, and, and an individual uh, young police officer, uh, Eddie Doherty, is, uh, is basically uh, left on his own to, uh, to uh, take more initiative than he might normally with a, with a team of detectives. Doherty is not a detective at this point, he's just a young constable. Um, and. Uh, uh, then uh, finally, there's there's the book that I'm going to continue discussing here, uh, the glass, the glass night. Uh, now, um, uh, these four books I think can be divided up into two groups. Uh, with La Constellation de Lynx and the Revolution Script, we have a treatment of the crisis itself. With Black Rock and with uh, the Glass Night, uh, it's intended by the author that uh, that the um, the crisis is in the background. So I don't want to be too hard. I have criticized Helwig a little bit already for what I consider uh, artistic missteps, and I'm going to, continue, I'm going to criticize him more. Uh, but I, I, I do think it's important to underline that his, his book does fall into a category in which uh, uh, the novel is not intended to, to have the, the crisis front and center. At the same time, uh, because the crisis is so significant, uh, the question is, does he manage to evoke that quality of, of, of crisis in his novel when he wants to? In other words, does he succeed artistically at those moments when evoking such, such a situation, such an atmosphere would be uh, artistically appropriate? Um, and the uh, passage that I'm focusing on is, is one of the most uh, political passages in the book, but it's, it's, it, it has strengths and weaknesses, and above all, it has this strange sort of eerie distance from the entire crisis, as if, uh, as if almost as if it's happening in another country. Now, I'll continue a little bit more with a couple more uh, passages uh, from the book. Um, Robert, uh, this, uh, this uh, middle-aged lefty, uh, uh, a publisher, uh, and a man of letters, uh, goes to, I described him earlier as a writer, but he's, he's really just a man of letters, uh, goes to uh, meet his uh, friend Peter, this uh, 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 lefty from his student days who's, uh, become, a, uh, who's become an MP within the, uh, the Federal Liberal Party. And uh, Peter is described as follows. Peter rose, quote, Peter rose and came to the door of the office to meet him, Robert. His hand extended, face smiling, a man almost as tall as Robert himself, but heavier. The vest of his dark suit curving smoothly over the beginnings of a paunch, echoing the curves of his developing jowl and balding head. 
he was smooth and substantial, end quote. Now, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, a, a good passage. It's a reason it captures, it evokes uh, the physicality of Robert. It's not a great uh, piece of beltristic writing. Uh, it continues, uh, quote, uh, insert quote, Hello, old man, good to see you again. Would you like coffee? At, uh, end of insert quote. It all came out in one long, clearly articulated sentence. Insert quote. Yes, Robert said, I would. And insert quote. He felt uneasy as he stood there shaking hands as if he had blundered into the office of a stranger and claimed kinship, etc. So the two of them make small talk for, uh, for a while, and then uh, uh, Peter slips out to get the coffee. And uh, Robert is scanning the, uh, the memorabilia on, on uh, Peter's de desk, and he sees a photograph of Dorothy, a woman that they were both interested in in university. And uh, the passage uh, that follows is written this way, uh, quote, uh, Robert hadn't seen Dorothy for years, and the face in the photograph was like a mask made to resemble the girl he had known in university, the same fine, wide smile that made her seem more open and spontaneous than she ever was. Dorothy had been a girl on the way up. In fact, that was the reason why, although she and Robert had gone out a few times, there had never been anything serious between them, for Robert had been, even then, unpredictable and moody, not someone to be counted on." End of quote. I'm not sure how I feel about this passage. It's, uh, on the one hand, it captures Dorothy's personality well. It captures something about the family of, of Peter and Dorothy. Um, and it captures a certain personality type. Uh, but at the same time, uh, it's part of a tendency within this novel uh, for uh, Helwig to want to uh, um, mythologize, I think, his protagonist a little too much. He's a little bit too close to Robert as sort of this dark, moody hero. And that, I don't think, is really the writer's job. I think you should step back from Robert a little bit more and present him not so much as somebody who is uh, uh, awkward with women uh, because of these sort of Byronic qualities that he has, but awkward with women, as he is with his, his young girlfriend Elizabeth, for, for other psychologically more complex reasons. <laughs>